Today we're gonna rate the uh, March of the Machine, the Aftermath cards. Now, this, car this set was completely spoiled and leaked. Uh, and word on the street is that it sucked, but I'll be the judge of that. All right, Animist's Might. It's a green two generic sorcery. This spell costs two less to cast if it targets a legendary creature you control. Uh, okay, so if it targets your commander, you get a little bit of a discount. Target creature you control deals damage equal to twice its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. So, um, I think the deal is this is like a new fight card. I never used fight cards before. They were terrible. They dealt damage to your opponent's creature, but they also dealt damage to you. Sometimes you just lose your own creature. So they were like, okay, let's buff up the fight cards, right? This is, I, I mean, this, uh, this is as far as I can, <laughs> it's, it's rating. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So, they, so anyway, this is like, uh, we're buffing up, what's it called? We're buffing up the fight cards. You don't deal damage to your creature. It deals twice the damage than it did before, and I still don't want to use it. It's it's absolute crap. I love Match of the Machine. Oh god. Okay, I I will fix the typo after the show. You guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, Liquid Soulfly with uh Karn. There's a new Karn? Legacy Reforge. Looks sick. Look at his, look at his pose. He's been working out. He used to be way more bulky. All right, five generic for a star star golem. He's a, he's a creature all of a sudden. Karn legacy, reforged power and toughness are each equal to the greatest mana value among artifacts you control. Okay, so if you got like, you got lattice out, it's a six six creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, add a colorless for each artifact you control this mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact non spells and until end of turn you don't lose the mana as steps and ends phases so you get to keep the mana from upkeep to main phase it's not bad uh i would not play this card but it's oh do you know what i guess this this is why you want to play it. it's because he can be your commander it's a legendary artifact creature so if you're looking for that sweet extra legendary if you're looking for that artifact card, there you go. <laughs> Good God, you're so early. I woke up nine minutes ago. I have an eight hour road trip to Minneapolis. So if you want cough and MTG at all, it's gotta be now. Yes, for each artifact, for e each one, you're right. Did I say it any other way? Okay, Abzo, here early in the morning with Cosmic Rebirth. We got a white, green, one generic instant. Choose target permanent card in your graveyard. If it has mana value, three or less, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put it onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. You gain three life. Oh, so you can get anything, basically. So if the card costs three or less, boom, on the battlefield. But if it costs four or more, you just put it into your hand and you gain a little bit of life. Uh, who wants this actually? I, I like I'm, I'm I'm not particularly excited. It is instant speed Maybe I'm underestimating that part end of turn bring back my big baddie, but um, I Don't see it. I this is one of those cards I have to play against it to really feel it when all the stories find their ends a new one shall begin the end of saga Plan to make a new Narset commander? Oh, go for it. All right. Um, artifact lands make him a. Mo oh, you mean with Karn? Yeah, of course. Go play. But you can only play so many artifact lands. How many artifact lands are you going to play in your deck? You're going to have like seven? I don't know how many artifact lands there are in existence. Okay, uh, we got Beanpot, Copper Coat Vanguard. White one generic, a 2-2 human soldier. Each other human you control gets plus one plus zero. And as ward, ward one. Whenever it becomes a target of a spell or ability, you know, you gotta you gotta pay the ward one tax or it gets blown up. This card is pretty good. It was a time for rebuilding, but first Ikoria's wretched or sorry, wrecked cities had to be cleared for uh, of monsters. The deal with this card, it's a two two mana way of protecting the humans creatures. 
or the or the soldiers actually yeah i didn't think about that carlos it could be so it could be soldier tech oh no no it, it's not because it has to be uh well believe me most of the humans are soldiers most of the soldiers are humans but if you want him to get buff and have the ward one then yeah you definitely will play this card does this put humans back in contention i don't know but i mean it doesn't hurt and has two toughness, which is very relevant versus Ren and Six these days. Turia, Urborg. Ur sorry, Urborg Scavengers. All right, we got a black two generic two two spirit. When Urborg Scavengers enters the battlefield or attacks, exile target card from a graveyard. Put a plus one plus one counter on Urborg Scavengers. Urborg Scavengers has flying as long as a card with exile. As long as a card exiled with it has flying. Same is true as first strike, double strike, death touch, haste, hexproof, indestructible, lifelink, menace, reach, trample, and vigilance. So you basically as, okay, enter the battlefield or attacks, it just slowly accumulates more abilities from another creature. It reminds me of, um, what's it called? It was like a delve creature that did something similar. It's a spirit. It's a spirit that doesn't fly yet. Oh my god, he's got the Elish Norn crown on his ha in his hands. Okay, I'll let it pass, I think. It's a neat card. Okay, hold on. Uh I'll be back. I did not prepare my coffee today. I'll be back uh with a drink because I'm not gonna survive the whole hour. Don't change that channel. All right, got my cup of joe for the morning. Yeah, Soul Flare. I was thinking this is a Soul Flare. It's a new Soul Flare. That's exactly what I was talking about. Exile Sarah Angel. Oh yeah, get all get all the goodies. What if you exile the Soul Flare? Do you get all their abilities? Or, uh, or maybe the Soul Flare technically didn't have any abilities. El Grand Fatso, Vesuvan. Uh, Drifter looks interesting. Maybe we could see some play in Legacy to Brainstorm. Are you serious? Okay, we're going to judge. Okay, I've been playing a lot of Legacy lately. I'm going to judge this in terms of Legacy. Three mana. That's a lot of mana. It's a 2 4 flyer. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. At the beginning of each combat, you may reveal the top card of your library if you reveal a creature card this way. Uh, Vesuvian Drifter becomes a copy of that card until end of turn, except as flying. Like, I, I know what you want to maybe do is, like, I don't know, brainstorm and put big creatures on top of your library. I don't think it's going to work out like that. Like, this is a very expensive to cast. It's very expensive to keep. It does protect itself from Lightning Bolt. So you got that going for you. You can reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature, it becomes a copy, except as flying. I can have a, I can have a flying Tarmogoyf. For crying out loud. I don't think it's going to make the cut. Okay, Imani. Um, with Niv. Mizzet Supreme. You're, you're not wrong. It is Supreme. All right, we got for Wooberg. It's a 5-5 five, five dragon avatar. Flying hexproof from multicolored. Is that like that before? I can't remember. Each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard, that's exactly two colors, has jump start. Each instant, that is exactly two colors, or it has to be only two colors. So it can't be three colors. We can't have soul type cards in here. And it has protection from multicolor. This card, Zybers. This is, uh, this is a Wooberg creature that's like really, really hard to kill. Not indestructible, and it's like Snapcaster Mage for basically everything in your graveyard. Uh, mono. Oops. Oh, you're right. Yeah, hexproof from mono color. It's all about. It's all about reading, people. It's all about reading. Thank you so much, Muhammad. I appreciate it. it says mono colored. You guys are the chat before uh, the post. Ch <laughs> you guys are the chat before the post comment section. Gives me crap about this. 
Anyway, that card, I think this card's great. All right, D Scotes Leyline Immersion. Is this literally a ley line? No, it's not. Okay, green three generic. Uh, enchant legendary creature. Enchanted creature has ward two and tap add five mana in any combination of colors. Spend this mana only to cast spells. You have to enchant a legendary creature? So it gets a little bit of protection. Five mana! That's a lot of mana. Spend this mana only to cast spells. Oh, you know, it, so it sounds stupid when you read it, but uh, I, it makes sense when you think about it. So it's like, you're not allowed to use it, use it for activated abilities. But it's four mana! It's four mana, that's just wild. I don't know, I don't see this card. By the way, I'm rating these cards at a competitive level. Of course, everything is playable in Commander. Unless it's competitive Commander. Then you gotta play it like it's vintage for crying out loud. Leyline Immersion is really good. Is is really for a Wooberg Commander deck, is it? Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Five man in a combination. So you might want to have it in that uh, your Niv Mizzet deck, so you can cast the damn cards Niv Mizzet wants to cast. Okay, some of you guys are excited about Nar. There's a new Narset in here apparently. Narset Enlightened Exile. Narset when Jeskai! When did that happen? Okay, white, red, blue, one generic for a three, four human monk. Creatures you control have prowess. Whenever uh, Narset Enlightened Exile attacks. Uh, oh, and she's also a creature. She's not a, not a planeswalker anymore. Exile target non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Creatures in control have prowess. My god, I hate seeing that. That's, uh, for me, when I see prowess, that's danger. Okay, when it attacks, when it... You know, it's uh, screwing me up a little bit that she's got the word exile in her name. Because I feel like it's exiling something, but it's not. It's just a name. It's like, uh, it's like, I don't know, Emrakul the Exiler. But doesn't exile anything. Attacks, exile targets. Uh, non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from gra Oh, you, okay, so uh, you, be, you get to take people's spells from a graveyard. From a, Is it any graveyard? Exile target with, from a graveyard and copy it. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Beautiful. Um, okay, this card Zybers. It's a Zybering one. She was originally Jeskai, then white blue, then mono blue. Uh, she so she found her way. Then Jeskai and is Jeskai again. What is the timeline for this? Are we like way back in the past or something? It's called March of the Machine, the aftermath, but I feel like like we've got Niv Mizzet here. We've got we've got all the buddies and we have people before their spark. Or I don't understand this. Or are they are they allowed to make like the planeswalkers creatures again or something? So we can kill these planeswalkers? The old six mana legendary Narset that ha has this Narset as a friend. Yeah, Narsets do very well as friends with other Narsets. King Ginger says, like, that's broken. All the walkers lost their spark. Is that true? They lost their sparks. Oh, they've been de-sparked. Well, screw them and their spark. Do you know what? We don't need any more cards of any of these, these characters anymore. That is weird. How do you get de-sparked? Oh, did you get de-sparked because they were, like, assimilated? They got assimilated by the machines, and now they're all healed now, and so whatever. Supposedly all the Planeswalkers are now legendary creatures. Boom! Yeah, that was a lore drop. I learned something. Maybe everyone else... Hey, I would, I would wonder why are all these Planeswalkers creatures all of a sudden? This doesn't make any sense. All right, what do we got next? We got uh, from Muhammad, uh, Jirina, Dauntless, General. Okay, we got Black White. Oh my goodness! You know, I always get excited by a two mana creature that has a bunch of text on it. All right, we got a Black White two two Human Soldier. When Jirina, Dauntless General enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. 
that is broken in the right matchup. All right, sacrifice Jarena. Humans you control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. That is that is maybe the card that helps put humans back in contention in modern because that is busted. So basically, you get to sacrifice. It's main deck graveyard hate. This is the best card I've seen so far, hands down. Main deck graveyard hate, and also you can sack it and all humans you control get bricked from all removal and sweepers. Like you can give hexproof, so like even if you if you fury, you solitude, anything, nah, no, I don't want any of this because Jarena Dauntless General says no. Jarena said no. And that's it. It's it. It's done. Death and Taxes loves this card. But Death and Taxes doesn't really like splashing a color. You know what I mean? I don't think they like doing that. Chandra still has her spark. Really? Some Planeswalkers still got the spark, like Chandra. It's because they weren't assimilated. Chandra's like, who's more powerful now, Narset? Bragging about being so blue all the time. Alright, Armageddon with uh, Nyssa, Resurgent, Animist. Aha. Yeah, no more no more Nyssa shakes the world around here. Alright, green two generic for a 3 3 elf scout. Uh, oh, is that what she was the entire time? A scout. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. Then, if this is the second time this ability has resolved this turn, Reveal cards on the top of your library until you reveal an elf or elemental card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So what it's saying is like, okay, if you cracked a fetch land, uh, you can dig for like an elf or elemental card. Yeah, sure, it's okay. I don't think it's a competitive card, but you know, whatever. In your elf deck. Anyone looking for the elf lord. Anyone looking for, I don't know, their heritage druid. Or if you're playing commander, you only get one of, so it's hard to get the elves that you want in any consist consistently in any game. Using all them tutors. Well, Grand Fatso likes the likes the new Nissa. Uh filter out. Is that a real card? Sometimes you guys make comments. Oh it is. <laughs> that I, I don't know if it's a if you, are you telling me it's a card? You're just making a comment. Uh, it's a beautiful art. Oh my god, we got the Ixalan Merfolk here. Blue, blue, one generic. Instant. Return all non-creature, non-land permanents to their owner's hands. Oh. All of them. Return all non-land... Sorry, non-creature, non-land permanents to their own. It's like, it's upheaval, but not for your creatures. I'm just wondering, have they, have they ever made a card like this? Or is this unique? I've never and I've never seen this before. I think it's it's different. It's not. It is almost yeah. Non. It's got to be non-creature though. Well, as a merfolk player, I don't care. I want the creatures to stay on. The, like I would like an upheaval that doesn't tamper with my creatures on the battlefield. You know that's what I'm going for here. Boulder with that huge super chat in the morning. Thanks for being the best you can be. Enjoy your road trip. Thank you very much, Balder. I'll appreciate even more. Thanks to you. Hello from Australia, Nick. Yeah, so artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, uh, artifact lands. Oh, no, it can't be artifact lands. It still says non-lands. Why can't I bounce art? It should just label everything. Artif it bounce all artifacts, planeswalkers, enchantments. Um... I can't think of any other card type at the moment. Oh yeah, maybe it's anti-treasure tech. You know, bounce all those treasures and everyone's been making. Got to balance out them treasures. And battles. Yeah, we can <laughs> We can bounce battles now. What a bizarre card type. They look so bad on Magic Online. They're just disgusting. I like this card. Are emblems permanents? They're not. Uh, no. I don't know. I'm assuming no. I don't think emblems are permanents, but I don't know. Maybe this. Cause it can it bounce an emblem? Does anyone know? I always look at emblems like this completely untouchable 
most sacred um, orb of some sort. They're not. No. Okay. Yeah, we can bounce the battles now. That's great. Thank you very much, Filter Out. You're the answer that we didn't know we needed uh, and we probably don't need in the first place. All right, Jacob with the uh, gold... Thorge... Thopteryx. Is it thorned? Is it gold thorned? Is it gold thor? It's gold forged, maybe? You know, Jacob, if you're going to suggest a card, you, you can at least spell it right. Says the person who misspelled the title of this show. All right, Gold Forge Thopterex. We got a blue white uh, dinosaur Thopter. That is, that is bizarre. All right, we got it's a 1 3 flying lifeling creature. Okay, you're going to gain a whole lot of life with that one power. Uh, each legendary permanent you control has Ward 2. I don't know where to really put this, but like legendary permanents include your planeswalkers. So, I mean, is this just like another stacks piece to protect the planeswalkers that act like stacks pieces? Worlds apart, Hualti built a device Sahili would have been proud of. Did Sahili die? Is that what this this flavor text is insinuating? Oh yeah, Hualti's Dino Zord she made for her girlfriend. Oh. Okay, so she's alive. <laughs> Would have been proud of. Sounds like she died. Nothing says love like a giant <laughs> dinosaur. For that, we're going to say it passes. Yeah, nothing. Uh, <laughs> Look what I got you. Do you like it? You want to go on that date now? Uh, that's funny. Okay, Plarg and... Plarg! Or pl Plarg and Nasari. Oh, okay. uh, the whole set feels like the end credit of an RPG, which everyone celebrated, and I love it. <laughs> or the, uh, or uh, yeah, exactly, the end credits of, or of a movie. Uh, Cerise, oh, thank you so much uh, also for the gigantic super chat. Nothing better than ending a long shift with the Nikachu MTG stream after being up for 24 hours. You gotta be kidding me. Oh, you're uh, obviously on the night shift. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, Sahili didn't die, but she is Hualti's girlfriend now. Oh, yeah. Oh, are those the two that got together? I thought for certain it was like Chandra and Nissa. Okay, okay. I got it. They're official now. You know, everyone's like, the Planeswalkers are finally together. I was like, oh, Chandra and Nessa, it's canon. Oh, it's Sahili and Hualti now. They were alive, but a lot of walkers are were desparked when Ren self-destructed Realm Breaker. What about Jace? Did he get desparked? I'd be fine if we did not see another Jace card again. They did too? Oh, they, they're also together. Everyone's getting together. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, we all knew. We, we all knew. That wasn't a secret or anything. It was basically canon. All right, moving on. Plarg and Nasari. It's, it's just a matter of time bef between before we see, like, Chandra and Nissa in their own card. All right, red, red, three generic for a 5-4 Orca Freet. At the beginning of your... Upkeep. Each player exiles cards from the top of your library until they exile a non-land card. An opponent chooses a non-land card exiled this way. Uh, you may cast up to two spells from among the other cards exiled this way with, without paying their mana costs. Hold on. Is this broken? Like, um... Each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card. An opponent chooses an online card to exile this way. You can cast up to two spells from... Oh, you can only cast up to two spells. I was just thinking, you could easily build your deck that there are no lands in it. You just dump the whole deck. Oh, you could... No, okay. I'm just thinking... Okay, so an opponent... You can get one... You could actually have maybe several versions of Thassa's Oracle. Or you could have Thassa's Oracle and a clone, right? I think you can build a combo deck with this. You just have to make sure none of your, your entire deck is not lands. You have to use those, like, spell land things. Uh, play this. Empty your entire deck. 
uh, the opponent chooses maybe Thass's Oracle, but then you get to choose a maybe a clone? I don't know. Maybe you don't get to choose a clone. Because I don't know if they come into play simultaneously or not. You may cast... Uh, an opponent chooses an online card exiled this way. You may cast up to two spells from among the other cards exiled without... Oh no, they you get to they get to choose one and I'm just they don't even get to cast it. Why do I feel like magic is really starting to go well <laughs> starting to go woke 7. Half of the gate watch being LGBTQT and then uh well, started uh, I think you're late to the party. It's, it's it's always been that way. This is where you insert that meme always has been. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm, I'm just, I just think that the, there's some way, there's, there's gotta be some way to break this card in terms of, like, dumping your entire deck into your graveyard, and then, I don't know, having, like, Laboratory Maniac, Thassa's Oracle, or something at the bottom that you can win. Yeah, they could, yeah, they could choose the one, so we have multiple, co like, multiple versions of the one, so, like, you know, you can have, um, the, what's it called? Uh... You can, you can have, what's it called, uh, Laboratory Maniac as a replacement. Not as good. You gotta draw a card or you're gonna lose, but I think that's how it is. Nick with the $5. Thank you so much for the 5 bucks, Nick. A uh, lot of Planeswalkers hooking up. Turns out suddenly not being able to traverse the multiverse makes you really consider, <laughs> consider your options. <laughs> yeah. That's how, it, that's how it is. It's like, uh, it's like when... On, if you don't have availability to online dating, you gotta like just choose whoever's around in the community. That's it. I think you read it wrong. Okay, at the beginning of your upkeep, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an online card. An opponent chooses an online card exiled this way. Oh, so not taking. They have their own libraries that they're exiling. So they can choose one card, you can cast up to two spells from among other cards exiled this way without paying their mana cost. Or, or do they get to cast from the pool of cards? So if you have Thassa's Oracle, Jace, Wielder of Mysteries in the deck, you'll win anyway. That's what I'm thinking. You know, or, or, or Laboratory Maniac. Or maybe they are anticipate. Like, I, I actually don't understand this card. Can any of the opponents choose my cards? Did you buy that Gandalf self from Ralph Bakshi? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> if you have Thassa's Oracle and Jace Wilder Mysteries in the deck, you'll win anyway. Hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. Anyone in the comment section, like, can I combo with this card? Am I reading this appropriately? Because I will give it the pass for that. That is a very powerful effect. Very, 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 very powerful. Are you going to be your... And it's this... Oh, no. It can't be your commander if I'm playing Thassa's Oracle. Damn it. That I can play Niv Mizzet. In two player, you cast one. In commander, you cast two cards. Honestly, can't wait for reckless handling. Okay, let's look at let's move on because I can't stand looking at this anymore. Reckless handling. Uh red one generic sorcery. Search your Yeah, uh search your library for an artifact card, reveal it, point your hand. Uh, shuffle, then discard a card at random. If an artifact card was discarded this way, Reckless Handling deals two damage to each opponent. That's a bit of fun. that's a bit of a funny card. Um, <clears throat> and the picture is great too. Like, whoops, whoops, I'll take care of this. Oops, I dropped it. So it's a tutor. It's an artifact. It's gamble. It's effectively gamble. It's it's one extra mana. Which gamble is, by the way, like a real this this card's gonna see competitive play. It's a two mana gamble, but it's still a gamble, and they, you can never use and you can't use enough gambles. Uh, it's reds. It's it's literally a red tutor. Like if you don't mind the card that you tutor for going into the graveyard, yeah, it's two mana artifact gamble. Oh yeah, it's only artifacts. Still, if you if you got a uh, Emery on the battlefield, you don't mind your artifact going into the graveyard, and so on. I think this will see play. All of a sudden, yeah, you can only search for an artifact. That makes it a little bit more narrow, but I think it's still a good card. Look, El Grand Fatso going to try to interpret this thing. What I understood is that your opponent chooses one card from the exiled ones, and you can cast any card except for the one. That's how I understood it. But you know what? Every each player exiles cards. So at the beginning of uh, your upkeep, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an online card. 
So now I'm really interpreting it. They get to choose one card. You get to choose two. You can do whatever you want. Pretty ridiculous in an affinity deck. In, in, in an affinity deck, but they um, you got to discard the card at random. They're not good at bringing stuff back from the graveyard. That's why affinity gets blown up. Okay, we're gonna move on to uh. Anyway, I I still think reckless handling is a pretty cool card. Markov Baron. Oh, Markov. Um. Black too generic for a two-two vampire noble with convoke. Why does it have convoke? Like it barely costs anything. You can just cast this for mana. But then again, you know what? Actually, that could be broken. Then it's basically you could like just spew out a bunch of vampires on the battlefield and then throw out Markov Baron at the end of it. Other vampires you control get plus one plus one. That is insane. And as lifelink and as madness. This card's great. This is a vampire staple immediately. I'm curious what this is going to do in modern. Is this the card that is going to put the vampires over the top? Because I don't think they have like a very good... They've got like really crappy vampire lords. they got to be like three mana. This is also three mana in some sense. But not really. Because you're going to convoke it onto the battlefield. Yeah, not just convoke. Madness. Okay, hold on. So, uh, Megagger is... You can choose two cards, but the but not the one selected by an opponent from your cards and all opponents ones exile this way. I don't get it. I still don't get it. It's a weird card. Someone should make a YouTube video. How, how plague are, and Nasari works. It's not completely obvious. Yeah, vampires are the new goblins. All right, uh, we're gonna look at more. We're gonna rate more cards from the aftermath, but we got it. One thing we have to rate right now is the beautiful Fusion Gaming Online, today's sponsor, where I would get my Aftermath cards if I needed any of them, because I get all my other cards from Fusion Gaming Online. If you want to buy cards like Nikachu buys cards, you get them from Fusion. And don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu, just like Nikachu does, to get 5% off all those purchases. Anything you want, cards, deck boxes, sleeves, and more. You'll, you can also support the channel by using the rental service, Mana Traders. The best place I go to get all my magic cards to rent as many decks as I want to play test the decks I need for the competitions that are right in front of me. You can support the channel using my Magic Traders link in the description below or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore FHD. All right, now back to the aftermath cards. Markov Baron, huh? The title has a I know. I'll have it fixed afterwards, hopefully. It adds to the flavor. I love Match of the Machines. We're all we're matching cards against each other. I wonder uh, if you can convoke the mats. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't know, Zick. I don't know. Can you convoke the madness cost? When rules attack. Again, it's like an AI generated card. They're just making AI generated cards from here on out. That's just how this works. The Wizards just picks the best of them. Okay, uh, Calyx. Guided by fate. Calyx. Okay, we got a green, white, one generic, two, two human druid. Constellation. Oh, that's a lame ability. When Cali uh, whenever Calyx, guided by fate or another enchantment, enters the battlefield and you, under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Very, very boring. When Calyx or an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may create a token that's a copy of, of a non-legendary enchantment you control. Do this only once each turn. All right, that was that. That Zybers. That's a pretty Zybring ability. And, you know, Bobby's always open over there. He does, doesn't actually ever play creatures, so I'll just keep attacking him and deal dealing combat damage to get more effects of my enchantments. I mean, Madness is a casting cost. It is. Good morning, Lord Magicus. Yeah, Calyx is going to be the new Enchantress Hotness. New Enchantress Hotness. 
Okay, we got Jacob here with Tyvar. The Bella Kos. I don't know why everyone was so down on this card. Like, I've already seen, what, two or three, like, competitive staples. Uh, green, black, two generic for a 5-4 elf warrior. That's a pretty chunky elf. Elves are usually puny. Big in numbers, but puny uh, individually. Whenever one or more elves you control attack, they gain death touch until end of turn. Uh, each creature you control has whenever a mana ability of this creature resolves. I thought mana abilities didn't use the stack. How, how is it going to resolve? Uh, put a number of plus one plus one counters on it e equal to the amount of mana this creature produced. This ability triggers only once each time. Like, whatever. I guess it's a cool card or whatever. I don't think it's going to... It's definitely not going to see any competitive play, though. I'll, I'll tell you my impression of elves. When they attack, you're dead. Here's like a critter hoof on, or something on the battlefield. They ain't attacking unless you're going to get wiped out in one shot. Today we become gods again. Again? Yeah, it's... exact. That, that describes it very well, Liquid Sulfide. It's very okay. <laughs> Abs was like, this is too many words even for a real magic card. Let's get the mana doublers and the triplers. Yeah, you just put a bunch of counters on them. But you can chump block all those things, right? When the mana ability resolves, I thought it didn't even use the stack. How can it resolve? Milton, while you cast the card, the creatures can help you pay so you can convoke the madness. While you cast the card, the... yeah. Oh, uh, really? Is that how that works? It's a mystery. Can we convoke the madness? If you discard this card, discard it into exile. When you do cast it for its madness, cost or point to the graveyard. It should have had asterisks. You still have convoke. Remember, you still have convoke. How do mana abilities resolve anyway? I know! It don't make sense to me. <laughs> Some many texts that it becomes a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Oh, it's kind of nasty with Wirewood Chandler. Maybe. Yuki says, today is their, your cousin's birthday. Oh, happy birthday to cousin. Convoke the Madness is the name of my heavy metal band. <laughs> as far as I know, you can as it's still casting goals. All right, we'll do that then. We'll discard it and then tap a bunch of creatures. It's like, I guess it's like Delve and Convoke, right? Still on reference to this Markov Baron card. The card that is uh, getting so much conversation for the wrong reasons. <clears throat> Nasty with Seedborn Muse and Commander. Could be. Uh, oh, is today May the 4th? Is today Star Wars Day? I don't have a Star Wars sound effect. Willie Hall would be so disappointed in me. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, my real name is Luke. Okay, do we have any other cards? Okay, moving on. Oh, hold on. Seven says, this card doesn't feel special at all. Like, I would have been okay with its being uncommon or something. It's a legendary creature. I guess it was too important in the storyline to make it uncommon. You stars. You, you! What are you, the Star Trek? I'm not, I'm not a hater on either of them. But I, I would lean more Star Wars than Star Trek, personally. Oh, I like that. Today is May the 4th be with you. Tomorrow is Revenge of the 5th. Oh, wow. <laughs> how hilarious how that works out. <clears throat> Bring up the pal. Oh, yeah, we do have something, Star Wars. Hold on. There he is. Okay, for May the 4th, we'll just, we'll have him on the, we'll have him on the show for the rest of the show. We do have something, Star. I totally forgot. We do have, we have Palpatine. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. All right, someone's still on on topic here. Gnarly bones full. Kiora, sovereign, sovereign of the deep. Oh, we got, I got a merfolk. Okay, we got blue green three generic four five. That is beefy. Uh, merfolk noble vigilance and ward three. All right, so good luck killing her. Uh, whenever you cast a kraken, leviathan, octopus, or serpent spell from your hand. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the spell's mana value, which is going to be insane. 
Uh, you may cast a spell without mana, with mana value less than X from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. As a merfolk master, I'm going to um, judge this very harshly. It's basically, it's gone. Card's useless. You know, this is one of those merfolk, like, you gotta be playing octopuses and serpents and crap like that to make useful, and they're all bad. They're all bad. Yeah, good. Let the hate flow through you. Yeah, we can shred this easily. Merfolk community looking like looking at Cura like, ah, this card is always useless when it whenever we come whenever it comes out. How many Merfolk play big dudes? None. Oh, you mean how many Merfolk play like big creatures? Like none. I guess this is it. This is it's just Kiora. And man, he loves this set. All right, Rocco uh, Street Chef. Is that a real card? That's a real card. All right, uh, white, green, red for a 2-4 Elf Druid. At the beginning of your end step, each player exiles the top card of their library. Until your next end step, each player may play the card exiled this way. This is just some weird... These are like the, this weird new card advantage tech. Like, exile cards from the top of your library and play it until end of turn. So whenever a player plays a land from exile or casts a spell from exile, you may put a plus one plus one counter on target creature and create a food token. Oh wait, we making food around here. David Howell is like, a merfolk that doesn't need merfolk. Seems like the best one ever printed. <laughs> I don't know how to make use of this. You says Dranith loves this? Oh, because people can't pl Oh, yeah, that's true. Dranith actually loves every card of this effect. Um, yeah, now Dranith Magistrate is broken. Cannot play cards except from your hand. Well, he is a chef. He is literally a chef. He's got the chef's hat. Okay, whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is an elf druid? He looks like a devil. This is like, this looks exactly like one of those situations where, um, the, the AI generated image is, is not quite what you see in the picture. And it's like related to like the body of text here. This, this is not an elf. It doesn't look like an elf or druid in my opinion. How many elves were red? You show me another red elf in my opinion. Looks like a oh maybe it's a waiter. Yeah, how is he not an imp? He looks like an imp devil of some sort. Yeah, AI text. We got you, wizards. We got you. You use AI generated art. Looks like a tiefling. I've seen some of these cards on Facebook. I hate the spamming of new sets. That's why we go through this slowly, nice and slow. Yeah, it feels way more like a demon. Or is this like a typo down here? It's not really supposed to be an elf druid. I don't understand what elf druid this, like, what what part of these abilities are very elf druid-like. Better leave the right tip. Yeah, he has the hat. I don't know. Maybe it's an elf druid cosplaying as a devil or something. He looked the same in his last cards. How many how many Rocco's are there? Come on, is there another Rocco? Is this literally an elf druid? Little bit different actually. Okay, so he I I will admit, like, I don't know why this um this elf druid is a little miscolored, but now he's this now Rocco's gone hard into uh looking like a devil of some sort. Studied the elves, maybe? I guess so. You live with the elves long enough, you become an elf. He's got... He's... Okay, we'll just assume he's got elf uh, citizenship. That's how it works. He has horns. He's a freaking devil. I know! I know! Does anyone know the background story of this card? Okay, we'll move on here. Jacob's got more cards. Sigarda, Font of Blessings. Okay, we got a white, green, two generic, four, four angel flying. Other permits you control have hex proof. Other. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. Anytime. And you may cast angel spells and human spells from the top of your library. 
I don't know. You know what? I really don't like these cards that you can cast cards on the top of your library because, you know, if there's a land, I f feel like this card is useless. And, the, you know, you, there's so many other spells in your deck uh, that you want to play, like the artifacts and stuff like that. Yuki says, uh, Nikiju, we don't know, but we buy my cousin a birthday card. He turned 13, and he won't have a party. All right, well, at least he's got the birthday card. Shred it. All right, we're going to shred it. It's gone. Human spells. Dude, this would be great in a human's deck, except it's an angel. Yeah, I know. Angels or humans. I'm, I'm judging this hard. Like, maybe this is okay. This is probably fine. It's uh, just, it's not that powerful. It's just one of those, you know, like, let's, let's just play stuff from the top of our library when it comes up sort of stuff. Cigar, it looks great. It is a great art. 10 out of 10 art. The, really, the art is really nice. All right, we'll, we'll give it a pass just for the art. Some people good in angels? Uh, maybe, if you have enough angels. There's not a lot of angels in this game. Even if you look up every single angel. Training grounds? Is that in this set? Oh, they reprinted training grounds. Uh, blue enchantment, activated abilities of creatures you control cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than one. This was, I, I don't know, maybe this is good in commander. It's bad in competitive play. It's completely worthless. People have, many have tried. Few have succeeded. But the price of this, I guess, blew up because of, uh, because of commander. Commander players, you love your activated abilities, and you prefer that they cost two less to, to cost to activate. All right, we got seven with Sarkan Soul Aflame. Oh, too many Sarkans. There he is. You also lost your spark. Okay, we got a red, blue, one generic, two, four. I didn't even know he was blue. Uh, dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Sarkan Soul Fl a Flame become a copy of it until end of turn, except its name is Sarkan Soul of Flame and it's legendary in addition to its other types. That is a wild card. That is definitely a pass. It also makes the dragon cards playable. You know, at four mana, that would be fine, but there's just not a lot of dragons at four mana. They're at like five, six, seven, eight mana. So uh, all of a sudden we can now play the, we can play dragons for a reasonable cost, and um, uh, you can become a copy of those dragons. Attack with two glory bringer. Yeah, reduce and copy. I think this is a dragon staple. But what do you do? You play this as the commander. Or you put this in the ninety nine. That's the real question. Goes around the legend rule since he keeps his name. That's right. He's going to keep his name. Sneak attack. <laughs> Why? Why would you need sneak attack with this? I don't think it's, it's necessary. Okay, Sarkon is a trap making you play bad dragons your in your deck. Well, then you just leave this as your commander. The bad dragons will be cheap. In the 9... Oh, you guys want to have it in the 99 for your two Ur dragons. With Miram. People love your Mirams. I don't get it. You guys love your Mirams for some reason. Is that like the most popular dragon of all dragons? I didn't know I didn't know that was so popular. I gave it like a I put it in the B or C tier or something like that. Okay, we got the Vesuvian Pablo. Vesuvian Drifter. I thought this was a small set, like we'd get through every single card. In one shot. Uh, oh, we looked at this card. Um, we, we saw this one already. Okay, we'll look at Nahiri. Nahiri Forged in Fury. Oh my god, she's pissed. She's absolutely pissed. Uh, white, red, four generic, five, four. Uh, it's like you dumped her or something. Okay, affinity for equipment. The spell costs one less to cast for each equipment you control. It's like the worst affinity for anything. Like, how many equipment are you going to have on the battlefield? 
Whenever an equipped uh, creature you control attacks, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. You may cast equipment spells without paying their mana. You may cast equipment spells without paying their mana cost. But probably my equipment already on the battlefield. I don't like this card. I think it's just a real, it's a real, he real clunker. So you need to have the equipment on the battlefield first to get the, you know, get the cost reduction. So then you're, you can cast artifact, sorry, equipment spells from the top of your library, but how many do you have in your deck? Like, <laughs> she's pissed that Nissa rejected. <laughs> Got with Chandra. That's possible. Spark ruptured. Hammer time. Well, you can only have one hammer in your deck. Oh, you mean like an, ac an actual competitive hammer time deck? Would that work? I just, I just don't see like playing a deck loaded with equipment. That would be so unstable. Yeah, I don't like this card. No good. Yeah, plays 60% equipments. I don't see the issue here. Okay. <laughs> some people like... Okay, some people like their equipment, I guess. This card was made for you. Okay, McGarger. Um, Ayara's Oath Sworn. Ayara's Oath Swarm. We got a black one generic 2-2. Two, two. Human Knight with Menace. I think they're helping the tribal decks here. There's a lot of like really cheap, meaningful um, tribal creatures. Whenever uh, Ayara's Oath Sworn deals combat damage to a player, if it has fewer than four plus one plus one counters on it, put a plus one plus one counter on it. Then if it has exactly four counters on it, search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Eh, it's a little less impactful than I thought it was going to be. Comment to the player if it has fewer than four. We put a counter, then if it's exactly four, uh, switch your library for a card, put it into your hand. So, okay, if I understand this correctly, if it has four counters on it, it's just a tutor every turn. If it has fewer than four, you put a counter, but if it, if it has exactly four, hold the fort! It's just a tutor for whatever you want every single turn. That thing is insane. I don't know how you get the count. You're going to have to cheat the counters on it. I, I wouldn't depend on waiting every single turn to uh, attack, deal damage, put a counter. Uh, but if you um, you know, if you cheat some counters on there, you get one counter and proliferate or something, it probably is pretty good. That's pretty cool. It's a bear with cool stuff. Yeah, it's a creature tutor. But every turn! The Ozlet? Yeah, maybe the Ozlet. You got to be careful with the Ozlet. The Ozlet will, Ozlet will put everything onto a creature can't just put exactly can't put like five yeah it has to be exactly four nick advocating cheating cheating in the right way cheating in the right way using the rules of the game okay gwj thank you so much for the super chat just catching up is the theme of this set that planeswalkers can't jump planes anymore or they're all stuck yeah they're all stuck wherever world they're on there that's it and not all the planeswalkers just most of them just a lot, of, or I should say a lot of them. 2-2 two, two, that just gets bigger by hitting face seems good enough on its own. I know. Should be good by itself. A tutor, but you have to attack to trigger it. No, you have to deal damage. That is a whole different ball game. But if you deal damage, it will work. Instead of cheating the counters onto it, can you just find a way to tutor or whatever? But that wouldn't be as fun, Toilet Duck. That wouldn't be as fun. And where's the avatar with the, the toilet and the duck in it? I get... Hold on. I'm, I'm almost... Okay, whatever. I'm not going to waste any time today looking for it. But <laughs> I think that would make a great av avatar. If I understand this correctly, for it to tutor, you need to deal damage with it or else it doesn't work. Yeah! Yeah, you, you read the fine print, Mordrak. You read the fine print. So after the fourth plus one plus one counter, it, it, it continues to get one each, continues to get one one each time. No, it doesn't. No more counters after the fourth. If it has fewer than four, you put a counter on it. But once it has four, it just tutors over and over again. You can still travel through planes using portals left by the world tree, but it's dangerous. Oh no. That's Jace's end story. He's going to use the world tree and he's uh, not going to make it. Spark Rupture. Is that an actual card? Spark Rupture. 
White and two generic enchantment. When Spark Rupter enters the battlefield, draw a card. Each planeswalker with one or more loyalty counters on it loses all abilities and is a creature with power and toughness, each equal to the number of loyalty counters on it. What a weird card. So, okay, you basically deal... Oh, well, anyway, that Zyber's with me. That is such a... It's a very unique card. Each planeswalker now becomes a creature. But you have to have loyalty abilities on it. It's power and toughness are each equal to number. So if you had five loyalty, it's a five, five creature. Someone's going to play this. <sighs> Will this see competitive? This might see competitive play. This is like an excellent hate. Like it draws a card and it's insane hate card for uh, planeswalkers. Drafting the set is going to be dumb. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are there any planes? Like, what is this even playable in draft? Are there any planeswalkers in the set? Yeah, take that, Teferi. Wrath them all. Yeah. First, I made you human. Then I show. And then I made you, uh. Um, mortal. Some play. I'm excited for Nar set with Monster Mentor and Standard. Oh, God. This is a huge dead dummy. Hu or sorry, this is a huge deal dummy. I, I know. No, a yeah, no actual walkers in the set. <laughs> so it cycles. It's an enchantment that cycles. Yeah, to everyone complaining about Teferi and Rent, this might be the answer. This doesn't, this not, the set doesn't suck like uh, I was told. This actually is quite an interesting set. I don't know what the hate was for this thing when it got, when it got leaked. Yeah, finally Oka will be on Ben. No, I don't think so. That's not happening. Old Swarm says exactly four plus one plus one counter. So if it gains the fifth counter, you can't do it. That's true. So don't put it on there. Okay, we got Brandon with uh, Ob Nexilis. Oh, he's back, is he? Captive King. Oops. Uh, Ob Nexilis, Captive King. Oh, sorry, King Pin. Uh, red, black, two generic for a 4-3 demon, flying and trample. Whenever one or more opponents each lose exactly one life, put a counter on Obnixilis, captive kingpin. Uh, exile the top card of your library until your next end step. You may play that card. Again with the exiling thing. They're giving red card draw, and I don't like it. Like that, and it's like more powerful than the blue card draw. Exiling cards from the top. Well, I don't, maybe it's not powerful. More powerful than at literally drawing cards. Until your next end step. He an elf too? El <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, this is what the chef looks like. He loves pinging. Oh, yeah, that's true. He's a kingpin. The, the, ping, the pinger. I thought it would rhyme. So like Calv Caval Cavalcade of Calamity. I don't know what that means. Yeah, red is the new blue, green is the new every other color. Go infinite with all will be one if you can trigger him. Is that how it works? It's not drawing, it's exiling, red card draw. Yeah, well, it feels like it's just as good. Hey, if you're a red player, you have nothing in hand anyway, so you're just gonna play whatever comes off the top of your deck. In some ways, it's better. It has protection from Thoughtseize, all right? So when it, whenever it's something like exile top two cards of your library, you can play them until your next turn, to the end of your next turn. It has protection from Thoughtseize. So in some cases, it's better. Flying with a picture of him sitting in a chair. <laughs> yeah. He's flying in this chair the entire time. Wash away gonna be lit after the set drops. Let's wash away. Is that the? Oh, okay. So we got what is it? The pigeons eating a dead thing over there, a dead zombie. We got a blue instant with cleave. Oh, they brought cleave back. Oh no, hold on. This is no. This is from an old set. We don't need this card. Super obnoxious with cat combo. Yeah, that's true. Okay, Abzo, Harnessed Snubhorn is a good boy. Harnessed Snubhorn. Okay. 
We got more dinosaurs here. White three generic for a dinosaur vigilance. Whenever harness snub horn deals combat damage to a player, return target artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a two five for four mana. It's a broken ability. I will give you that. Like, if you can deal damage with this, that's pretty powerful. It's anything. Return artifact or enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It can be 20 mana if you want it to be, and it doesn't matter. It's all okay. The dino has a boot. It has a big booty. To be honest, I think its head is bigger than its butt, but whatever. It's a 2 5 for your Doran. Erland, Igna, and Asika. Inga, no, sorry, it's Inga and Asika. Oh, the chariot! Is it cat? I thought the cats were riding in the chariot. The cats aren't like the ones pulling the chariot. And they're on Rainbow Road! What kind of Mario crossover is this? All right, blue, green, two generic for a 4 4 human god. Creatures you control have vigilance and tap. Add one man of any color. Spend this mana only to cast creature spells. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if three or more mana uh, from creatures was spent to cast it, draw a card. That Zybers was me. I like draw. I like casting my cards and I like drawing cards. Ooh, Manny, that's right. Cheat out omniscience with your harnessed snub horn. They'll never see it coming. Why is omniscience in your graveyard? Inga and the Sika was insane in Mom Sealed. Oh yeah, I imagine. This is basically a card drawing machine. All you have to do is cast the card. Uh, that's not after, not aftermath. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Apparently I'm still looking at this card like it's a new card for me. Okay, well, we'll go with Jacob. Jacob knows all the new cards. Jacob is on point here today. Metropolis Reformer. And the Rainbow Bridge is from Kaldheim, a homage to Bifrost from the Norse mythology. No, they stole it from Mario. And that's canon. They stole it from Mario. Because uh, that's the most popular Rainbow Road in a, in in pop culture right now. All right, white, two generic, two, three, angel cleric, flying vigilance. You have hex proof. And whenever metropo uh, Metropolis, sorry, why am I pronouncing this stupid? Metropolis reformer. Whenever Metropolis reformer is dealt damage, you gain that much life and you, uh, it's a two, three. It's a two, three. It's okay. Flying and vigilance for three mana. I don't like it enough. Imagine Mario stole it from Norse. That's true. That's true. That probably happened. That's how this stuff works. They swiped it from Norse mythology. I heard the new Sigarda is strong as F. But what's it called? Mario stole it from <laughs> Leprechaun. <laughs> uh, okay, so what are we looking up here? The new Sigarda. Oh, there's so many Sigardas. Oh, this one. Nah, I don't like it. Oh, he's after me Lucky Charms. It's like, it's okay. If you, if, I understand there's probably people who like this sort of effect, but I'm not really impressed. It's like other permits you control have Hexproof on it. Well, we'll just kill you then, you know. And Norse stole it <laughs> from nature. Okay, I just googled Mario Rainbow Road, and yes, you are correct. The Rainbow Road on the card looks most like Mario's Rainbow Road. Exactly! Exactly. Where is it? Where'd it go? No, we're not ending the show until... Oh, we're gonna show the Rainbow Road. What was the card? That, uh... Oh, yeah, it was the cheater card. Uh... The Chariot. What is the Chariot? Oh, what are they called? Asika. Okay, hold on. So here's the Sika's chariot. And let's just look up Rainbow Rainbow Road Mario. You see? It's the same Rainbow Road. They swiped it from this. I'm telling you, Mario, that's how they're doing it these days. 
They don't have to do crossovers. They just have to sort of rip off other intellectual property. Which also, by the way, they, uh... I'm, I'm sure my... <laughs> Mario ripped it off from Norse anyway. Mario's mustache is actually Peach's. You! She's not. A... Where are you going, Ben? Well, anyway, that's some lore that I don't need to know. Okay, everyone, that's it for Coffee and MTG today. Do you like the set? Is it completely underrated? Because I just heard, like, hate coming from left, right, and center, and the cards don't seem that bad. But if you want to be part of the show and rate the cards with us, you got to be here Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Be there or be square. Thank you so much for all the support, everyone. The super chats, they really help the channel. And also everyone who is a member on YouTube and a patron on Patreon. If you want to support the show, links to that are in the description. But most importantly, we got to thank the people here who, who showed up this morning like Liquid Soulfly. We got Zick. We got Some Pleb, King Ginger, Tommy Siddons, Magar, Mordrek, Abzo, Jacob, uh, Magus of the Bargain, El Gran Fazzo, Milton. Because without you guys showing up in the morning, I would have no show. So, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees. And we'll keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will...